State Attorney General Merrick Garland, he's continuing to defy a congressional subpoena and is refusing to turn over the audio from Biden's special counsel deposition. Garland appears willing to be held in contempt in order to shield this tape from you, from the American public. Remember, this is from Biden's interview with the special counsel, Robert Herr. That's the one that caused the special counsel to describe your president as, quote, elderly, an elderly man with a poor memory whose mental state could prevent a conviction. Wow. Even though he willfully held on to classified information and top secret documents. And yet again, Biden wants another, what, four years in office? Today, he was back in Pennsylvania, kind of because it's the closest battleground state to both Delaware and the White House. So it's kind of an easy trip for our weak, frail, mentally, physically frail commander in chief. But during a handful of lethargic campaign stops, well, Biden's mind appeared to be elsewhere. There's something about Pennsylvania that leaves Joe yearning for the olden days. So he made the fatal mistake. He went off script and treated voters to one long, rambling, bubbling, mumbling story, one after another. Take a look. I was in one of those eight by 10 bathrooms, you know, they have shower, toilet, and a sink. And I got a towel on me and shaving cream. And I heard bam, bam, bam at my door really loudly. And, uh, I wonder what the hell is that? I thought it was this guy, Bob Cunningham, on a radio show, and a couple of the guys. So I said, okay, okay, guys. And I walked to the door and opened it up, and standing there was the former governor of the state of Delaware, Albert Ann Carville, a big guy, about 6'5", talked at you like he is. Did you get all that? Because I didn't. Anyway, it didn't end there. Biden later reminisced about his old uncle, Bozy, who Joe says was eaten by cannibals. Wow. Was it Hannibal Lecter? I don't know. Take a look. And my uncle, they called him Ambrose, uh, Brosie, they called him Bozy. My uncle Bozy was a hell of an athlete, they tell me, when he was a kid. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came along. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. And he got shot down in New Guinea. And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. Is there anybody in this audience, all of you watching, do you think that man is strong enough, is cognitively alert enough to be the president of this great country? Do you really believe that? And what are the accomplishments over the last four years? Can you name any? I can't. Biden told the exact same story two times today, and if he was able to stay awake past nine, not watching our show, darn it, we want everybody to watch. We'd probably hear uh, the story for a third time. Needless to say, Joe's trip to Pennsylvania was an utter disaster. Watch more. You heard me say it before. Wall Street didn't build America. The middle class didn't build, build America, and you guys built the middle class. Unions built it. My mom didn't live in, in Scranton since she was 1954, but when you would ask mom where she's from, she says, Scranton, Scranton. I'm Pittsburgh, uh, and uh, because of, and I, I really mean it. Are you inspired by your president? And while Biden is rambling on incoherently on the campaign trail, the White House is now calling for tariffs on Chinese steel and aluminum imports to be tripled. Now, in 2019, that same Joe Biden actually ridiculed Donald Trump for a similar move. Quote, Trump doesn't get the basics. He thinks his tariffs are being paid by China. Any freshman econ student could tell you that the American people are paying for his tariffs. Joe's tariffs. Anyway, Joe means like all the corporate tax uh, proposals that he laid out this week, they're going to be paid for by you, too. Corporations don't pay taxes. They pass that on to you. Now, of course, in reality, Biden doesn't even know what day of the week it is, much less the basics of international trade policy. Unless, of course, there is a 10 percent cut for the big guy, he probably understands that part. Democrats are now trying to re-elect a cognitive mess with a record of failure who can barely muster the energy to campaign and is now trying to create a phony appearance of being America first, something he outright rejected just four years ago. And Trump, meanwhile, is gaining momentum. He's drawing big crowds. He's leading in the polls. And it is no surprise that a New York judge 
who donated to Biden. Oh, that's fair, is now keeping the Trump, uh, the Trump campaign and Donald Trump, the candidate, off the campaign trail, trapped in a courtroom. And if Democrats had their way, he'd be in court for the next 201 days uh, with a muzzle on the entire time, like the gag order New York has imposed on Donald J. Trump. As it stands right now, Trump is mandated to appear in a Manhattan court uh, every single Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from now until whenever this ludicrous trial, you know, eventually will wrap up, probably a month, maybe five, six weeks from now. Nobody knows. New York state law does allow a judge to waive a defendant's, quote, mandatory attendance after a required motion if the prosecutor doesn't object. But don't expect that from the judge in this case, Juan Mershon. Now, uh, Mershon has already threatened Trump with jail if he fails to appear and also issued that unprecedented gag order preventing Donald Trump from even defending himself in public. He's not allowed, or they're going to put him in jail. What happened to freedom of speech? Meanwhile, other people that are involved in the case, they're free to speak out anywhere, anytime, about anything, and they are. Again, this is a judge he donated to Joe Biden, President Trump's chief political rival, whose daughter reportedly a Democratic political operative. And this so-called trial is being based on what? An eight-year-old misdemeanor allegation well past the statute of limitations that even the DOJ, even Alvin Bragg's predecessor, all passed on, was revived by this far-left DA Bragg because of political pressure, marginally turning this into a felony, trying to use federal statutes to do it. Sadly, Trump will be judged by a Manhattan jury pool, 90 percent of New York City. They voted for Joe Biden. And in 201 days of Biden wins reelection, God help us, because this weaponized Department of Justice, it will never recover. Say bye-bye to the rule of law in America, because it will fold like a house of cards. Anyway, we have a lot of ground to cover. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.